Episode of Oops Wrong Hole brought to you by Disney. Just kidding. Please don't sue me. Disney has nothing to do with this. Please do not sue me. Ghost of Walt Disney. I don't know who the hell's running Disney right now. Is it Bob Iger? Is it you, Bob? Are you tapping into my phones, Bob? That's the one time that it's good to not have anything is when you're being sued. That's the one time that it's actually great to be like dirt poor, super broke, when some greasy businessman comes up to you and says, I'm going to take everything you've got. God, I would love to have that conversation. I would love to have, I wouldn't love, you know, everything leading up to and following that conversation because that life is rough, but I would love to have that conversation. Just, just to have a greasy businessman come up and say, I'm going to take everything you've got and be able to look at him and have the freedom to say, well, I hope you like stained t-shirts and expired ramen, sir, because that's all I got. Well, uh, what about this house? Joke's on you. I'm squatting. That's right. I've been here three months. Door was unlocked, so I came right in. I'm pretty sure somebody's dead upstairs, but I don't want to check. Wow. Uh, okay. What, what, what about those those weird-looking shoes you have on? I can have those. I can take those from you. These are used diapers. Oh, my God. I know, right? doesn't look like it, but it's the magic of invention, you know? Found these in a trash can out back next to some duct tape. Little elbow grease later, and voila! What do you think? Who needs Nikes, am I right? I have never met anyone in my entire life that smells as bad as you do right now. So you're not staying for dinner, or...? That's right. Victory is mine. These shoes are sticky. Ugh. What have you guys been up to, huh? Did you guys catch the Golden Globes? Oh, I did. Not gonna lie, I'm not as excited for award shows as I, as I used to be, people. And, uh... I mean, that's a weird thought in and of itself, because now that I think about it, why was I ever excited for award shows? I suppose it's because I'm a person. And people do dumb things. I mean, seriously, why do we watch these shows? I know I was talking about the Golden Globes, but let, let's focus on the Oscars for one second. If you break down the idea behind what we're doing, it is one of the most pathetic, sad things that we could do. We're gathered around the TV, watching a rich person go through this weird pagan ceremony <laughs> where they're given a golden statue a golden naked man, and they're being given this golden statue by another rich person. And how did they, how did they get chosen to receive the golden naked man? Why? Because a giant group, a conclave of rich people went, yes, yes, we will give the golden naked man to them this year. And then next year, we'll give it to somebody else. Oh, oh yes. And the peasants, oh, the peasants, they will gather around their televisions and they will watch as we play this endless game of naked golden man hop potato. It doesn't make any sense that we're watching this. Think of this, too. Do you ever watch somebody else get a promotion? Would you want to do that? Because that's what we're doing. That's also what these award shows are. Every one of these gold statues is a promotion. That's why they're overwhelmed. That's why they're crying. Their eyes hurt from trying to count all the zeros on their future paychecks. That's why they're crying. It's exhausting for their retinas. It's all sickening, people. It's disgusting and it's empty and vapid and meaningless. A meaningless, soulless circus of a culture. And I'll tell you one thing. I hope I get one of those statues someday, because... What? What? I want one! Judge me if you want. I don't care. I'll hang out with Meryl. She gets me. Just me, her, and Daniel Day. Old Double D Lewis. That's what I call him when we hang never. Maybe Denzel could stop by. Little Pacino action. Little De Niro. Some Marlon Brando up in the house. He's dead. That'd be a problem. Pacino would just be there uncomfortably next to Robert De Niro. hoo -ah. Hey, who invited Marlon? Bob, was it you? What? Of course. Of course, Al. Yeah, it was me. It was me. I just go around digging up dead bodies. It's kind of my hobby. What's the matter with you? No, it wasn't me. Bob, Bob, okay. Calm down. We get it. We know it wasn't you. Jesus. When did you get so sassy? I was only saying. He's dead. 
This is very uncomfortable. I don't want to be sitting next to a corpse. And then the corpse would move and everyone would freak out. And we'd find out it was Daniel Day-Lewis the whole time. That's how good he is, ladies and gentlemen. That's how good he is. He would win an Oscar for that performance, even though it wasn't in a movie. He would win all the awards. And, and the, the Oscar, Oscar for Best Actor goes to Daniel Day-Lewis for Marlon Brando's corpse at a dinner party. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. I, I didn't think this could happen again. To be here before you all, you wonderful, wonderful artists, people who have to expose a part of their soul every time they take on a character. I am overwhelmed with gratitude. You know, every time that we do one of these roles, we always give up a part of ourselves. This is the one time that I actually had to put someone else's parts on myself, and it was extraordinary. I, I don't know if it can ever be replicated. I, I'm sure I won't. Not in this lifetime, anyway. When the idea first came into my head, I thought, Daniel, this is, well, very illegal, morally wrong. Your wife, your wife will leave you, Daniel. She will leave you if you do this. And then I thought to myself, I don't care. It's all worth it for the golden naked man. Thank you so much. My favorite part of award shows, and I hope the Oscars will be just like this because the Golden Globes had this. My favorite part of award shows is that we get to witness the rare phenomenon of actors who don't want close-ups. It's the one time, it's the one non-paparazzi related time where they reject a camera being in front of their face. That's not how it is at work. Every other shot that isn't a close-up, they're just there tapping their foot. Listen, I know this is a wide, but I was thinking, what if we do the whole scene from like a foot in front of my face. I just thought, you know, like the intimacy is just really necessary for this scene, you know, because of no. the, no? I told you no 50 times, no. You're, oh, you're right, you have a vision, got Jesus it, got it, got it, it's fine. I'm just, just giving ideas, bro. You gotta be able to work with people, man. You can't just get mad every time somebody suggests an idea. It's not everybody, it's just you. What? It's just you all day. Oh, come oh, on. I'm sorry, is this a wide shot? Maybe we can make it a close-up. Oh, what, what, is that a landscape shot? How about a close-up? You know, I was thinking, how about we make the opening and closing credits just a long close-up? How about a, how about a, how about a, how about a, I swear to God, I'm gonna throw you down the stairs. Um, I'm feeling really triggered right now. Uh, are you serious? You hit me in the face. This is the money maker. Oh man, I'm sorry. I'll aim for your leg this time. Wait, what, no. Oh. The Golden Globes, the Oscars, the Grammys, the one time when they don't want a close-up. And it makes sense, though, because, I mean, think of it this way. It's a control thing. When they're on set, they're like, I want my close-up. I demand the close-up. I ask for the close-up. Bring me my close-up. When it's not on set, they're not ready. They can't control the situation. They're not ready for when that camera comes around and catches them stuffing cake down their face like a doofus. Oh, no. No, I don't look cool. I don't let me wipe my face. No. No. And there the camera goes, and you're done. You're done. That was your moment. You blew it. Eating cake like a dumbass. What are you doing? You got to sit there looking ready, looking sharp. Don't eat. Don't drink. Don't enjoy yourself. Just look ready for your close-up. Otherwise, you pull a Brandon Fraser. <laughs> oh, I just hurt myself laughing. Oh, that's how funny I think that video is. If you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen the video I'm referring to of Sir Brendan Fraser... The star of the Mummy movies, George of the Jungle, Blast from the Past, Bedazzled. Actually, I've never seen Blast from the Past, but the other three I've seen. That guy. I love that guy. And he was caught off guard at an award show. I, don't, I forgot which one it was. I'll, I'll find it and I'll link you guys to it. But, oh my God, what he did was just, it was the pinnacle of embarrassing. It was delicious. It was, it was gourmet embarrassing. Just, mm, mwah, so good. He did the fun... <laughs> <laughs> he did the funniest, most unfortunate thing. You know what? Go watch that video. What do you do? Go watch it. Go now. Go. Check it out. It'll add some years to your life. Every time you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, you're going to pop that video on and just bask. Just bask in the glory. Thank you, Brandon Fraser. Let me know what you guys think when you see that video. Thanks for listening. This has been another episode of Oops! Wrong Hole. I'm Ramsey's Ralvacast. And you can find me all across social media at Ralvacast. Go ahead and reach out. Send a tweet my way, people. Send those tweets. What? 
Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, just hang up the phone. What? That can't. That's that's not possible. You're serious. Like you're serious? All right, guys. I'm being told President Donald Trump is calling into the show. Uh. uh that should. All right. Uh, answer the. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready. Hello? How'd you get this number? Uh, President Trump? Is that you? Yeah, that's me. How'd you get this number? Uh, you called me, Mr. President. Nice try, Kim Jong-un. I would never call you Mr. President, okay? Ma- not gonna sir, happen. Sir, I'm not saying you called me, Mr. President. I'm saying you, you called me. You. And I'm not Kim Jong-un. You called into a show? You called into Oops Wrong Hole? <sighs> that does sound familiar. I think... Yeah, I did want to call... Ramsey, Ramsey, is that you? Almost, but close enough. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm on the show. Okay, relax. Relax, Donald. Breathe. <sighs> Ramsey, you are running a fine show. Well, thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm serious, though. It is the best. Wow. Simply uh, the best. Oh, no. Better than all the, you know... Um, yeah, yeah, no, no, I get it. I get it. Listen, Mr. President, we're actually wrapping up the episode, You know what so... I tell people, Ramsey, when they ask me, what's your favorite show, Donald? Uh, no. Ramsey, don't be a party pooper. Come on, guess. Guess. Taxi cab confessions? I don't know. Oops, wrong hole. Oh, dear God. I tell everybody, I'm like, guys, listen, if there were ever a show Uh that I gave birth to, if there was like me in show form, it's oops, wrong hole. It's it's better than racism. Ah, It's better uh. than ripping people off. It's so good. Full disclosure, I've never heard an episode, but I don't need to, Ramsey, because that title does it for me. It says it all. It's my favorite Favorite, favorite show, and I totally endorse it all the time. Great. Oh, I gotta go. Somebody's coming. I'm technically not allowed to use the phone without adult supervision, so I'll call back soon. Please don't. Oh. Oh, boy. Um. Well, I gotta change the title of the show now. Like, right away. Jesus Christ. Hasta la bye-bye, everybody.